Core Stats, powered by the Mayo Media Net here on YouTube and presented by Jock Market, the daily fantasy app where you make money. What a crazy idea. And if you'd like to get with us throwing our weight around the Jock Market, download that app for free. Use the code MMN for Mayo Media Net. They're going to match the first 100 bucks for free. And if it's free, it's for me, baby. We have been doing extremely well in the jock market. Really should not be much of a surprise with the type of work we're putting in using all the nuance and context you could possibly stomach. The laser guided focus, very granular, detailed analysis as we get into the three pillars of profit here on Cork Stats. We're doing daily. DFS, jock market, the overlap into total base props. We're covering fantasy baseball every single day for 10, 12, and 15 team leagues. I mean, come on. And then a couple bets to get you paid in the shade and laid like an egg, baby, man. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I know I did. Funny, when Sunday rolls around and I'm kind of unplugged, I just can't wait to get back to it. They say Manic Monday, wish it was Sunday. Not me. I love the work I do. And remember, when you work this hard, not only does it feel a lot less like luck, I'm not sure if you work a day in your life, man. For a guy that works 20 hours a day, you'd be... It's kind of crazy to really be looking forward to get into a work week like that. But enough of that. We need more of this. It's the fastest show in MLB absolutely anywhere. Please do us a solid and rate, review, and subscribe to the audio-only pod. That stuff matters more than it should. And in a few minutes, I'll probably beg you for a cartoon finger somewhere. <laughs> How do you like that, bad boy? Man, I'm going to put my spin on just about everything. All right, come on, man. Before the show gets off the rails like it tends to every single day, let's get into the first pillar of profit. We'll be looking at our stack attack. There it is, the jock market 7-Eleven stack attack. Let's get it, everybody. This one is over. Always my favorite. I love to buck the market. I love to buck the general trends. And I know Spencer Howard for the Rangers is a very popular stream this week. And we are going to do what we do, which is basically disagree with everybody. Give us the elephants balancing on beach balls. We want those Oak Town righties against Howard, who has really, really struggled this year. The ERA at 11, his whip at 188. But, 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 come on, we're not going to pick on 11 innings. We will look at the entire career sample. 85 innings pitched, a 744 ERA, 165 whip, and an 883 OPS. All the attack metrics firmly in place. This year, it has been a true struggle for him. His first strike rate below 50%. That is not viable in the bigs. Pairing it with a foul ball rate over 19%. Once you're at that 19 mark, you're really the type of pitcher that's wasting a lot of pitches. The chase rate at 31%, way too low. In zone contact rate at 89%. So let's stop for a second and think about that. That's like called the no escape combination. I don't know who else remembers the Ray Liotta movie back in the day with that prison island. It reminds me of that. There is no escape. That movie was so awesome. I'm going to tweet a gif about that later on. But here was the point. If you can't get ahead, 46 for a strike, and you give up too many fouls, you're inefficient. You can't induce chases, so you have to come in the zone where the contact rate is extremely high. And then you get to the bad math. 41% fly ball, 58% hard hit this year, 15 barrel and 9 blast. If you're new and unfamiliar to our work, welcome aboard. I know once we got to get listeners, we tend to hold on to them. I mean, I know, listen, man, no one is bringing the heat like we do every single day like this baby 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 blast being the ideal subset of barrels we've seen the subsequent production on barrels degrade this year as far as a year over year perspective goes so i like to kind of look at blast i always like everything but anyway it's led to five home runs per nine this year i mean he's bad but no one is that bad again let's zoom out to the career against right-handed hitters a 944 ops you can't get by like that this year again zooming back in 1500 OPS to righties year to date. He, the problem is the Arsenal basket here. It's cutter, fastball, and sinker. Well, they're all fastballs. You're going to have to do a little bit better as far as off-speed and breaking offerings to switch up speeds. 
Righties have a 1,000 slugging year to date on that bin of balls and six home runs. So give me the Oakland Righties. We've been looking at the bad guy, Reza Ramon. Last 14 days, 32 plate appearances against Righties. He's hot to death. 46 hard hit, 22 barrels, 17 blast. Hachi, Machi, Liberace, 276 batting average, a 4-1-4 ISO. Over 1,000 OPS. Let's stop again for the best lesson we can give as we do this, right? So all of these players are viable in DFS, DraftKings, FanDuel, and the like. When it comes to jock market, every one of these players is viable. I expect to profit, but remember, price matters. And then when we get into total brace props, we really want to be looking at that ISO is isolated slugging because walks do not count. So OPS can be misleading if a hitter has a lot of walks. We'll cover a little bit more of that in a second. So give me Razor Ramon doing the thing against righties as of late. And then we're going to go to Murph Dog, Sean Murphy, last 30 days, 60 plate appearances against righties, a 360 batting average, 933 OPS. The ISO the shade below 200. I generally am looking for 250 for total base props. But again, if we're going to get run scored, and remember another piece of the calculus, Oakland is visiting. And that matters because if you're visiting, you're guaranteed the ninth frame. Always want to be careful with those things when we're putting together these um, bets. And why it matters so much, how we apply the different analyses to the different formats. So Loreano is going to be awesome across the board. Murphy, I don't think I'd be going for the total base prop, but I do think we'll get some production from him. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes yard against Spencer Howard. It's really, really bad. All right, so that's our first stack, Oak and Righties. Then let's get with those Friar Tucks from San Diego in the perfect weather going up against Jose Urania. He's now popped up with the Rockies. Yikes, going back to 2018 again. We don't want to be picking on six inning samples. That's not how you get paid in this game. 223 innings, right? That's a good, nice, fat season going back to 2018. 533 ERA, a 153 whip. Everything we're looking for. 6% K minus walk. Yes, 6% K minus walk. That ain't going to do it. 290 batting average and 350 Woba allowed to righties, and it's really a hyper usage of the sinker, so we want to be keeping an eye on that. 51% use of the sinker year-to-date. That pitch has a 640x slug, so I think Urania's ERA is actually pretty low. We don't care about any output stats almost whatsoever. Give me all the inputs. We'll figure out what's going to happen from there. So we got to be looking at the Macho Man Manny Machado. Last 30 days, 55 plate appearances against righties. 60% hard hit rate. That's 95 miles an hour on the outswing. 12% barrel. He is a 300 batting average, 234 ISO, 909 OPS with three Shamalama Ding Dongs in that period. Looking good since he's returned. All systems go for Machado. And then my dude, Luke Voigt, for the audio-only listeners, you will see the bomb emoji in place of the O. Clever me. Give me all the Voigt today. Last 30 days, that's 76 plate appearances against righties. A 273 batting average, 333 ISO. See, that's that really delicious ISO. 333 ISO. You're expecting at least three plate appearances against a righty. And hopefully, that would do it for the total base prop. So, something like that. You know, just to give you an idea of how we kind of come to these conclusions on my days off, you know, um, I people hit me up every single day looking for their stuff, but, you know, I don't get to it every day. But just give you an idea of how I might get to it. Luke Voigt's player prop, though, base prop, I'm sorry, she's at minus 140. So, like, I wouldn't touch that. Although some people are into paying juice, you probably get with Voigt. I think I'd be more into the home run prop today than the total base prop. Again, just a little bit more of the calculus where you'd want to be putting the price together. All right, let's get up into the last jock market stack today. We want the Boston right. He's going up against Fleming. This one might be a little bit of a window of opportunity for us to jump early. Matt Whistler, I saw as a listed starter. I don't believe he will be starting. He threw an inning two days ago, threw a third of an inning the day before as an opener. He generally gets a couple more days off between the Rays called up Josh Fleming to start. Uh, or at least pitch, I'm sorry to say. we got to be very careful, you know, with these Rays. They do like to do the juke, the duck and dive. Now, that's another one. If you bet on this game, they pull the starter. That game's coming off the board. If 
they move from Whistler to Fleming. You might see these total base props all shift right from righty to lefty. So there's an opportunity to get in early on. The Red Sox, I believe Fleming will get the start. 23 innings this year, a 6-17 ERA, 1-9 whip, yikes, 900 OPS on the year. 10-digit K minus walk paired with the 90% in-zone contact rate, right? That's the kind of the basis of what we're looking for. A pitcher that does not get strikeouts puts guys on base via the wall. And then gives up a lot of contact. We know the Boston offense is awesome. Now, Fleming does tend to keep the ball down. 62% ground ball rate, which is excellent. However, pairing that with a 43% hard hit rate, a 433 Woba, and 1,000 OPS to righties. Righties are getting a bit of lift or hitting it hard enough that it's finding a hole. The ground balls are not great. But if we're looking to kind of stack and keep the line moving, there is plenty of... Of that, righties have beat him up. That's where the 1,000 OPS against righties really comes into play. So give us J.D. Martinez. Year-to-date against lefty, 72 plate appearances, 45 hard hit, 16 barrel, and 11 blast. Good for a 383 batting average, 233 ISO, and 1,100 OPS. Two home runs and eight doubles. So he's a monster with doubles hitter against lefties, which would be fine for us. Love the total base prop for Martinez. If you leave it up, it's always going to shoot it the other way into the gap. And then Trevor Story against lefties year to date. 236 batting average. Yikes. Not so great. But the 870 ISO and six home runs. So he does get the power stroke going against lefties. 42 hard hit, 14 barrel, and nine blast. There you go. The low batting average probably hurts you for a total base prop. I don't think I'd go for story there. And of course, the last piece we're always looking for is the line of placement, of course, being very important if you're focused, your bet is focused, I should say, on a single player. You need the at bat. Obviously, you want as many at-bats as possible. Boston is on the road, so if you are expecting them to score five runs or more, then I think that then shifts the calculus where if Story's price is palatable, you could probably get with it. I didn't check it. I could actually do it in real time right here. I don't do much of that. It's at plus 125, so I don't have that marked, but like maybe that is maybe that is worth it. The low batting average knocked him off the model hit. Again, just to give you an idea of how I get to it, I don't use magic. I don't use a crystal ball. I try to use as much data-backed math as possible. So, all right, that's your stack attack for today. The Oakland righties. Padre, righties, and Boston. Righties, if you find yourself playing DFS, DraftKings, or the like, you could backfill into those lineups. And especially for jock market, it being price dependent, sometimes these players fall through the cracks, especially on bad teams like Oakland. So Oakland may have right-handed hitters that are going off in the $3 range. Get with that pricing. So remember, that's where jock market is so awesome it leaves the open door for inherent leverage remember free squares and DraftKings, everyone piles in does not happen in jock market if a player is cheap it's because there is no demand which opens up the door for those big percentage gains which is really how i made my money in the jock market so that'll do it for the stacks and the first pillar of profit let's get into the fantasy end all right so fantasy monday I haven't seen you for a couple of days. We all did our ads yesterday. We do the waiver show on Thursday, but if you follow me on Twitter at MLB Moving AVG on the Bird app, yo, you'll see on Sunday I've been circling back to add trending players. So I added a few players, knocked a few players off our board. Of course, baseball always moving from Thursday morning to Sunday. So hopefully you kept up with that. Got a couple of nice ads. Let's do the fantasy news and notes and then kind of whatever effects we're going to get from there. Royals said Sunday Whit Merrifield left the game with a toe. Um, No news since then. I guess it's a Nicky Lopez desperation bump, whatever that means to you. Not much going on there. To the Pirates, Brian Reynolds removed from Sunday's game with the Brewers. He had discomfort in his right side. Now they're calling it day-to-day right now, but there was... No news. We know side injuries can linger. We know they can be easily re-aggravated. So I'm not expecting Reynolds to return until I see him in that lineup. I would not be starting him this week. Looks like a Diego Castillo desperation bump. Note I had here was, don't be buying what these teams are trying to sell you. Hat tip to my dude, Dave McDonald, making his 
you know, a daily appearance here. He has really ingrained that in me, of really making sure that you don't fall for the coach speak. Jordan Alvarez yesterday was a perfect example. He's getting one day off. He, team announces he's getting two days off. Ten minutes later, the team announces on the IL. Now, granted, it didn't really hurt you as far as a lot of impact goes, but it goes to show you they will put out official reports from coaches, from beat writers, from the newspaper itself, you know, that are just incontrovertibly wrong 20 minutes later. So just keep an eye on the news. Don't be buying what they're selling. Over to the Mets. After Sunday, stalling Marte removed with the injured groin. They said it's nothing more than tightness. Won't require an aisle stint. Again, I think I want to see him in the lineup. A hard, especially in NFBC lineups or daily leagues, to eat zeros if you don't have to. Over to Colorado, CJ Cron did not play uh, yesterday, he got hit on the left wrist Friday. They said they're going to give him one more day. X-rays were back negative. Again, just the beaten horse, right? The repeating record here. So it looks like Grichuk and Daza possibly get the desperation bump. Obviously, if Krohn is playing, you want to start him. If it's a weekly league, maybe you do roll the dice. I hate to eat full zeros. Gosh, that will really hurt you, especially in head-to-head. Over to Cleveland and the Guardians, Josh Naylor scratched from the lineup on Sunday, he was supposed to play first, uh, but it had to do with the back. So it was a lingering back issue. He had him out for a few games this week, right? So that popping up, not really great. Owen Miller got the start in his place, but I think this is probably the big circle for Nolan Jones, the prospect who's up. Guardians have a bunch of shifting around that they do. Jones started since he's come up. I think he'll continue to be playing, I believe it was left field. Over to St. Louis, Dylan Carlson scratched yesterday. Minor tightness, they didn't really expound on that right they didn't expand at all so we don't really know they said it's not really serious newt bar started in his place i don't know i don't think i'm starting carlson now he's been great anyway so i'm probably not starting carlson wait to see what happens these tightness you know tightness again we short nail right out one day turns to two turns to four ah you know what you might as well i yell him meanwhile you're sitting here holding the bag and you might have even had a player on your bench to start in that place. I think I always take the non-zero. Unless, you know, hang on as long as you can. Today, there is one early game, Cleveland and Detroit, first part of the doubleheader. So if you, you know, those, there aren't a ton of viable guys in those teams, luckily. So if you can hold on and wait for news, but if your replacement plays Monday and the guy you really want is out or off, I usually go with the non-zero, especially if the matchups are decent. Last but not least, Mets catcher James McCann on the 10-day IL with a left oblique strain. Nito gets the bump, though we've done very well with catchers. Anyway, unfortunately, I think we had to say goodbye to Christian Bethencourt, who's been awesome for us since we lost Tyler Stevenson and Danny Jansen. Now Stevenson is back. Bethencourt is dumped. I added, like, Servin on Colorado because they're in cores for the week. I tweeted that out. So, again, just trying to be as useful as we can being all things to all people. I think that's the fantasy side for today. Keep an eye out for really where we make our bones playing fantasy Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We mine the advanced statistical leaderboard on Tuesday and Wednesday, hitters and pitchers for, you know, some, I don't know, some underlying stats maybe not everyone has access to. And then I time sort them to look for breakouts or to get in on players you know entering the top of that side wave that we often talk about sometimes it's even really good hitters that have been discarded that now we think are just going to go for the second half which has been very useful and then thursday i put out that nice graphic 10 12 and 15 team ads at every single position how could you do better than that and then friday we'll do the news and notes looking forward for the weekend so hopefully this is a little something for everybody you know we do analysis really detailed and granular stuff for the player v player daily dfs jock market stuff macro news and notes fantasy and then we'll let's do a little bit of handicapping here we have a couple minutes of you know really probably my favorite thing to do that i don't spend enough time doing in this show because it just it's hard i want to do it for every game and just as i wish the show was with a four hour drive time show i could probably carry it myself commercial free if i had to all right here we go all righty so for the audio only listeners i'll walk you through it Let's start with the total base props at the bottom. I was just shaking when I saw this price. Ramon Laureano, who we walked you through, plus 140. If I was making one bet today, this would be the one bet I make today. I don't do the ultra mega whale smash. Not my style, never has been. I do, from time to time, accelerate and decelerate risk. The thing is, the 140 is so delicious that... 
just hit it and be happy when we get it. Hopefully we get it in the first inning. So if you skipped the beginning, sorry, you've got to go backwards. Lamar Loreano in the smash spot against Spencer Howard. I'm not really buying the Texas bullpen, although I think they've been good as of late. I'm just not buying it. Remember, bullpen usage is very wonky, especially if we get out ahead early. We might feast in the middle of that bullpen. Howard is probably not going to go beyond two or three innings in the first place. So give us Razor Ramon at plus 140. Remember, not only is he on the road, he's also batting second. And I think they're going to win. So there's everything you could ask for. We should get four, maybe a fifth PA. So we can might even get it done with two singles. Give me all the Ramon Laureano. Then over to J.D. Martinez. This one I mentioned before. He's at even money as hot as he is because they're slated to face Whistler on the book. I don't think it's going to be Whistler. I really do think it's going to be Fleming, who they made room for with the Jeffrey Springs IL move. Fleming came up, and I did see one of my more trusted sites have Fleming listed as a starter. He's rested on rotation and ready to go. So I believe it'll be Fleming. And if Fleming does get lifted, you'll probably see player props get pulled for Boston and then reposted at worst prices because they mash lefty. So J.D. Martinez at plus 100 over 1.5 total bases with Ramon Laureano. Now let's get to one bet that I do have. It is the White Sox money line minus 115. I just think we have the clear edge here. I don't know what it is outside of surface statistics. Let me see if I can show you exactly what I mean. We're backing Lance Lynn with a 5-3-3 ERA going up against Cal Quantrill with a 3-8-6 ERA. And you're thinking, how could we have the pitching edge? Well, I mean, that's kind of what we do. Let's look at Lynn first. Yeah, it's a 5-3-3 ERA, the whip at 1-3-3, but XFIP, Sierra, PCRA all below 4. The walk rate down at 6, which we really like. The swinging strike rate up above 12. So the disciplinary basket is pretty good, 28 percent with the end zone contact rate down at 81 so Lynn is winning in the zone a lot of stuff we like to see ground ball rate at 41 which is really good the hard hit rate is up but he was doing a lot of missing early on so I believe that's skewed to the front end I see the five percent barrel one percent blast rate those are really the things I'm focused on righties have a sub 600 OPS year to date and he's been excellent on the road thus far 261 ERA on the road for Lance Lynn again going up against Cal Quantrill 386 ERA 1 3 whip equal whip however his FIP XFIP Sierra PCRA are above 4.5 his K rate at 15 the walk rate is nice at 7 but when the K rate is at 15 it leaves you over to 7.5 K minus walk 8% swinging strike 17% whiff rate those are all extremely low he does have the elevated fly ball rate up over 19 which I mentioned before is where you start to flag it for wasted pitches. The end zone contact rate up at 88. So he gets touched up in the zone. Yeah, the other contact is pretty much limited. Quantrill's control is decent. But when we get to the offense, I think we're seeing the White Sox really get up off the mat. Remember, they got Eloy back, and now he's hitting. They got Robert back. He's back, and now he's hitting. Chicago White Sox, 278 batting average last 225 PAs. They've done pretty well. Not really striking out. One of the better hard hit rates in the league, 117 WRC+. plus. Now, with the Cleveland offense, I don't want to look past. I hate to do that. I hate when people do that. They kind of frame these arguments only in a way that benefits them. No, Cleveland is hitting, okay? So let's be honest. Cleveland is hitting 285 BA off the very good discipline and K rate. Cleveland is one of the best K rates in the league year to date. They do hit into a ton of double plays because the hard hit rates, the bow rates, a lot of the power metrics are extremely low. They also chase a lot. They don't walk. So I think that's where the matchup really lends itself to Lynn. I think he's going to have to win in the zone. I believe he will. I also think we're going to have to score off Quantrill, which I believe we will. I think the bullpen is very good. Liam Hendricks is back. You know he wants the rock every single time out. So I just think the... White Sox have the edge, and if it gets to the end, Cleveland bullpen really struggling as of late. I mean, wheels just falling off. Yes, if they're ahead by one and Colossi's in, they're probably going to get the job done. But aside from that, last 20 innings for 
The Guardian, seven days, 810 ERA, two whip. Yikes. 43 hard hit, almost two home runs per nine. The White Sox, bullpen stats, not great. But again, with Hendricks back at the helm, everyone getting shifted into roles where they belong. I just think the White Sox have the three-phase edge today. So give us the White Sox money line, minus 115. I fully expect this line to be minus 130 at the close. At least, maybe even more so, depending on how many people see this show early on. And then, of course, Ramon Laureano and J.D. Martinez for those total a base of props. And that will do it. Everybody, come on. If this show don't just absolutely reek of effort, is there anyone else doing this? I am not so sure. I'm out there looking, man. I got four eyes on the job looking for it. So if you agree with me and you do Just feel, you smell the work, right? We reek of effort. You smell the stank of hard work. Because remember, some guarantees in this life, man, death, taxes, sun in the east, setting in the west, bears making dookies in the woods, and me up before the crack of dawn, regardless day of the week, if it's a holiday or not, to bring you this show. So pretty please hit the cartoon thumb right below us. It just means the world. And I really got to thank the people out there, since I have a second, that take their time to help us. It's a huge help. You know, I say this all the time, and I, I like to think it's what separates me from the pack. Because I come from nothing, and I've had to do this kind of work to make myself sustainable. Now, I don't like to mislead people. At the time that I was betting professionally to keep the lights on, yes, it was a primary source of income. But even at that time, I was thinking about other businesses, making investments, being smart. The same things that we do here, I do outside Investing into industries that are depressed, taking money that we make in betting off the table and investing it into other things and allowing those to play out while you're being smart and not paying premiums in your real life. So remember, betting is awesome and important and I've been successful at it, but it's not the only thing. You always want to take these lessons and have them pour outward. And now to the people that are making it so, gosh, people like King Warris and Tug, Mr. Baines and Oh, man, I can't even get them on Dane and JC. You guys are up in there every single day. And Taj, I, I see you guys. I really do. Frank Amarante, my boy at Roto Bowl. I mean, he is one of my biggest supporters. He don't have to help us at all. We're getting help from in the industry and out. Regular people, everyday men and women like you and I helping us do the things we do that make up the Cork Stats crew. So really, I just cannot reach down deeper to thank you for your help. I don't want your money. We just want your support. We can help the public. And that what means the most to me is this is different. The reason it's different is because we care. And we care because we don't want your money. We want you to succeed. And I believe that the culture that's built will push this to the fore. And before you know it, you'll be catching this show, Mayo Media Net on with the bright lights going on all the major cable providers, man. And that's my dream for this show. So thank you so much. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the Audio Only Pod. Make sure you download the Jock Market app. We're going to be in there tonight throwing our weight around. We especially do very well when we're on the dogs, when we love those Orioles, when we love those athletics, when we love those Tigers, and no one else does, you're going to find shares, Oakland righties, three fifty, four bucks. Tap them, tap them nice, and let the profit roll in. You don't have to be great to make a huge profit. If you're just a part of a positive stack, those shares will pay a green screen for you. So, all right, man, that'll do it. Out of here. You know, Monday I tend to run on because I just miss you and I don't want to get away from you. But keep an eye out for the work. Remember, check us out on Twitter. I also have a Patreon page, but it's completely free. And all this stuff is thanks to Patrick Mayo, who gives me the opportunity to bring you all the tools. So if you appreciate it, tag him, get in the comments, let us know how we're doing. Implied team total, starting pitcher ranks, running the algo, jock market pricing, DFS rankings, and all of those things and more coming to you over the next... 10 hours or so, I'll be working up to the final bell as always. So take care of yourselves, take care of each other, enjoy the games, enjoy your day when we're done with the book. Enjoy that pay, everybody. Remember, when you work this hard, it feels a lot less like a lock, don't it? You're damn right, yo. I catch this on the flip side. Peace.